folks, welcome. I thought I would do a video. I thought I'd do a video on, I was just trying to think what I would entitle this video. I thought I'd entitle it something like, how to make corrections to ugly pots. <laughs> So, 14 ounces of clay, I've just been making some, a different style of a tankard mug, I'll show it to you, tell me what you think. It's a more dumpy affair, you could say, a little bit broad in the beam. So, yeah. Um, I'll leave the camera at that there for now. I get a lot of people on workshops and during the course of, course of making their pots, you know, clearly the pot has gone wrong. Um, but I see that a lot of people, it's like they don't know how to get it right again. They have, don't know how to get it back from the predicament that it's got into. They don't know how to get it back to center. They don't know how to, you know, make the necessary corrections. Because when we're throwing, uh, we're constantly in the process of throwing, making little minor corrections as we go. And it's very important to know how to do those. So I just thought I'd take a lump of clay, and I haven't really thought through this video too much, but I thought we'd just get the camera down there and we will put ourselves in some predicaments, let's say. And then we'll see how we can make the necessary corrections to get out of those predicaments. So we're going to bring the camera in a little bit like that. Okay. I hope this video will be instructive and helpful. Let's just see how we go. Let us see how we go. Okay, so one predicament, one predicament that people get into a very common predicament is and that is that their pot is not properly on center to start with. Their lump of clay. They may have got it on center like that. They may have Well, different scenarios happen. People get the lump of clay on center like that, and then in the process of opening out the lump of clay and opening out the 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 base making the base shape like So they've opened it out, it looks like that. They're aiming to get to that. Somewhere in the process, it goes off center. That is very common. Another case is whereby people, they have the lump of clay going around on the wheel like, 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 like so, and then they, they try to put a hole, they try to break in a hole like that. Okay, don't do that, okay? Until your lump of clay is absolutely smack in the center, don't whatever you do, don't whatever you do, break in, okay? You mustn't break in until it's dead center. All right, okay. So I'm just gonna break into this, and now I'm going to open it out. So now here, here, here's one of those occasions where the pot, you suddenly find your pot is doing that. What do you do to get it back in center? If at all possible. And for people who are beginners, that's maybe a tall order to get a pot like that, that's going off like that, back into the center. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put one hand here, one hand here, and I'm going to just, and first of all I'm going to really centre the outside, the outside wall of the pot, steady it. So steady the outside first, and then once you've got the outside steady, then put your, your inside hand in, and center it up properly again. It is possible to do that. Here's a thought and maybe a tip for some of you. If you can use your strongest hand, which for most people is their right hand, if you can use your right hand as your steadying hand. So a lot of people I notice are using their left hand to do the, the steadying like this and they're breaking in with their right hand. Now I was always taught to use my right hand as my steadying hand because my right hand is my stronger hand. So that's going to be the hand I want to to keep that pot running true, running on centre. So I'm going to use my right hand and I'm going to use my left hand to go in, to break in and to to widen the form. All right, there's a little bit of food for thought there for you. Okay, let's just You see what I have to do is create certain predicaments here <laughs> which goes against the grain for me, you know, as you can appreciate because I I So, let's let's deal with let's first of all let's let's pull up just pull up some clay. All right. So have wheel speed is all important. Don't have your wheel going too fast. Okay. If you have your wheel going too fast, you're going to lose the water faster. So just just think of that. Okay. Every time you put water onto your your pot. If your wheel is going too fast, you're going to lose that water all the faster. So slow down. Don't be in such a hurry. Okay, and that's one of the problems with electric wheels. Solution is get yourself a leech treadle wheel. <laughs> no, seriously though, just slow down. Okay. Get underneath the clay, lift it, and make sure that your lift speed is also sufficiently fast enough. Okay? Because if you have a slow lift speed, that's also going to cause you, you to run out of water sooner than you want to. All right? Now, let's start off with a a pot that is is too pinched in at the bottom. And I'm saying, you know, okay. So the ideal is Let's get a sample. All right. Let's say we are we're aiming at that. Okay, which is a a straight wall cylinder. Okay. So you see that the form goes straight down to the wheel head. But my pot is is like this. So somebody will call me over and, you know, well, I will see a repeated tendency for people that all their pots are like, are like this at the bottom. And I'll say to them, look, you need to know how to make corrections here. You need to, because that's, that's not what we're aiming at, okay? We're aiming at that, not that, okay? So how do we get, how do we make a correction? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go right down to the floor of the pot right into the corner there and we are going to simply push that clay out okay and fill it in basically right right at the base there now So you want to push it right out at the base there 
And once you've done that, you might have to push it in a bit just above there just to Pine needle or something, I don't know what it is in the side there. Okay, so right. so part of the exercise of learning how to throw a cylinder is learning how to throw vertically, learning how to throw to train your eye to throw a straight line, you see. So these are important little adjustments that we need to make. Let's, so that's that scenario. Let's imagine, let's imagine we have a different scenario where the wall of the pot is looking a bit like that, for example. You know, they can't seem to get the wall straight because it's, it's got all these, these, uh, these undulations in the wall. So how do we go from there to there? Let's do it. Right, so I think of this as a horizon when I look at the side of the pot. If you look out the window, look at the horizon, you look at the hills. So where the, where the mountains are sticking up, okay, we need to push them in. Where, the, where there are valleys, here, 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 we need to lift them up, okay? The way we do that is, let's go down here, there's a valley here, it's, it's, it, it, it's narrow here, isn't it? So we're just simply going to go down opposite that, that narrow point with our fingers, and just, just push out there. Again here, there's another valley. Just push it out there, touch. And up, up here at the top, there's a valley. Push it out. Okay? If there are mountains, we want to push them in from the outside. With my finger on the outside. And if we do that, as you'll see, now that is better. Okay. Finally, you, you can take you can take a, a stick like this and hold it there and just finalize it the sh the form. You know, and get it using your throwing stick to. It will just take off the, the slurry and clean the shape. Just be careful if you're using a throwing stick, you don't use it like that. Okay? You always want to use a stick like this at an angle like that. Okay? So that as it's going around, you're not touching the stick all at once, all up and down the side. Because that is going to create too much drag on one side, which will pull the pot off centre. Okay. Um, 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 uh. So what else? Well, sometimes another common. Well, we know the answer to it, of course, but another another common correction that needs to be made is is that the, the the top of the pot up here is going up and down like this how do we make a correction to that well most likely what we're going to need to do is take our needle pin tool all right and resting your your hand or wrist somewhere solid like on the side of your wheel 
and have enough speed, okay? Don't try and cut off, do a cut off with a wheel going like slow, like this, real slow. What you're going to need to do is make sure you've got sufficient speed, all right? Hold, touch my thumb here and my finger on that side, and then insert the needle slightly at a raked back angle, like this, okay? Insert the needle, dead true, steady, push it in and lift, all right? Cut off the top like that. It's very important that when you put the needle in that your hand is not wavering up and down like this because that obviously is not going to give you a straight cutoff. So to get a straight cutoff, make sure you have enough speed and hold the needle in slightly at an angle, insert the needle till it touches your finger. Once it's touched your finger, let it go around a couple of times and then lift. As you lift the needle, it should lift. Let's do it another time. Insert the needle, hold, lift. You should be able to lift it off on the needle like that. Okay? So that's a common... Now, a qu another mistake that occurs, and I can't really demonstrate this, but it's what we call a torque twist. That's basically where the, 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 the top and the bottom part of the pot they, they twist like this and you get a characteristic ripple in the side of the in the side of the pot say midway say something like this you'll see that the sort of rippling it's where the clay has gone thinner there. Now that could have been caused by you running out of water. So it's very important. Most people's problems stem from a lack of water. So I'm just going to show you this. I've shown it to you many times. I'll show it to you again. Take your, your fingers like that. Split them. Put them over the side of the pot like that. With the fingers actually touching the wall of the pot. And put water there. Just there. It will run down your fingers onto the side of the pot and it will lubricate the side of the pot inside and out. Once you've done that, and not until, you're then ready to go down to the bottom of the pot, okay, and with a finger posture like that, with your outside finger, this one, slightly lower than the one on the inside, okay, you're then going to start your lift all the way up. So the bulge that you see there is my inside finger is in the bulge, in that, in that bulge. When you get to the very top of the pot, okay, I, I let my outside finger, which was until then underneath, lower, okay, as we get to the very top of the pot, I, I make this finger come up. All right, this finger comes up on the outside here, just in this last section here. As I'm pulling up the side of the pot, then now the outside finger comes up. All right. The reason being is the why. The reason why is because when we bring this finger up like that, it it, it exerts. A pressure on the on the wall of the pot inwards okay so as it's coming up it, it keeps it in at the top just remember that and apply it see what you what results you get because a lot again a lot of people when they are, are lifting they're, they're, they they're ending up and their pot is 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 looking like that and they're thinking, oh, every pot I make, it's, it's wide at the top. Well, look, one of the things you've got to bear in mind is 
that we've got centrifugal force here which is forcing the clay outwards all the time. So when you're lifting you want to lift in such a way that you're mindful to keep it in at the top. Especially in that last half, half section or, or third, the top third, you want to make sure, you've got to think, I've got to keep this in because if I don't... Now some people, some people have their elbow of their left hand, okay, they have it down the whole time. So that you see how my hand is as I'm lifting? So what happens, the side of their hand here is pushing on the top of the edge of the pot. You see how I'm changing my, 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 you see my hand position? My elbow is up high on my left hand. That's how you want to, to learn to throw. As your pot, as you begin to lift it up, you've got to lift up this arm as well, all right? Okay, let's suppose that our pot is like that. How are we going to get it straight again? This is how I'm going to do it. Watch, just a little bit of water just there. All right, and now there's different ways of doing this, but you can you can just you just collar it like this. All right, just by putting your hands around it and very gently, gently being the word, bring it in, okay? Bringing it back to being straight again. Let's Let's imagine that we have a scenario where the pot is wide in the middle and we don't want it wide in the middle like that. How can I get that from looking like that? How can I get it back to looking like that? Let's tackle that one. Okay, again, a little water. This time we're going to do six points of contact like that, okay? So, one, two, three, four, five, Six. What we're going to do is, we need to keep these thing, these hands opposite each other. Okay, when we do this, not like this, but dead opposite, like this, not like that, like that. We're going to get down below that bulge. So you want to go down below the bulge, and then you want to just bring, keeping your fingers in the same position, slowly bring your both hands up together. And there we, we've pushed in, we've pushed in that bulge, you see? So basically, if you have, if you have high spots, like that, you want to push them in from the outside. Six points of contact. and you can push them in. If you've got narrow areas like that in your form and you want to straighten them out, you're going to have to go down on the inside right opposite that, that constricted area and fill it by pushing out. I mean, this is not rocket science, really. It's pretty, it's pretty basic. But I mean, it's surprising. People, not everybody, gets it. I understand when people are learning. There's lots of different things they're learning, and they don't always see things clearly. But I'm just trying to give you some pointers, okay? Basically. Those are the common, if you're a beginner thrower, if maybe you're somebody who's having, having some, <clears throat> some issues with your throwing, some inability to make corrections, you might find that this video is useful to you, all right? Um, there's probably other scenarios that I haven't mentioned. The talk twist, as I spoke about, it, sometimes people are 
I'm grabbing, I'll show you one more, one more thing while we're here. Let's just get rid of this lump. I'll show you one other thing. So, and some people ask me and they say, how many times, Simon, should I cone up the clay? Two times, three times? And I say, no, once, just once is enough. Just do it once and do it well, and that should do you. So to, to cone up the clay, pull it up just by grabbing it here and here and, and, and lifting, cone it up. Center it down. Break in. Now, some people, when they're opening out the clay, which I'm going to do now, they, they have it looking I don't think I wedged this clay up very well. They have it looking a bit, something a bit like that. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Let's just get the camera down there. Simon, we need to see what you're doing. Don't just talk. There it is. Can you see that? I want you to take note of the fact that this is rather thick here. You see that? Now really, it shouldn't, you don't want to have that situation where it looks like that. But a lot of people will and then from there, they go in underneath here and they start to try to lift that. They get underneath it and they start to li lift it. Okay? That's too thick at this point here for you to get underneath and start lifting it. So what you need to do... So when I do this, I, I, I'm going to get off the wheel and go over here so you can see my hand positions. Okay? As I'm opening out, this thumb here, okay, is pushing there on that edge like that. All right, and then that is, you see how that pressure there has thinned that, has thinned it here. Okay, so don't have it as I had it before thick there. Make sure that it is, all right, now you're in a position to, 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 to go like this, kind of squidge it in and get underneath it and now start lifting that upwards. Always lift it upwards and inwards so you end up with a cone shape like that okay that's very important in the early stages of your pot that you keep it uh, get this wheel going you get you keep it conical now I'm pushing in creating a lifting point there okay and now lifting up the cone that I created from the last pull Take your lift up to the top. When you get to the top, here, okay? When you've pulled up to the top, take it right to the top, but don't go over the top, all right? Don't fix bayonets and go over the top, all right? We don't want to do that. If you do do that, you will make the top of your pot, um, You'll make, it me you'll make it messy on the top, uneven, all right? So when you do your lift, bring this up all the way to the top. There it is, right at the top. Hold it there a second. 